This is Optimal Living Daily, Episode 2, Seven Rules That Keep My Life Simple by Leah Babauta of zenhabits.net. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. What's going on, Life Optimizers? Today's sponsor is me. I am super stoked to have landed this amazing partnership with myself. I'm just messing, but uh, seriously, I am my own sponsor. So if you enjoy this free service I'm providing, please check out oldpodcast.com and subscribe to the weekly newsletter. It's a nice and quick email that'll give you some actionable tips and resources and maybe even some inspiration. So that's at oldpodcast.com. Today, I'll be reading to you a post from zenhabits.net. Leah Babauta created the site and has an amazing story. It's freaking crazy and you should definitely check that out. But the very abbreviated story is that he quit smoking, lost 70 pounds, became vegan, ran marathons, eliminated his debt, and acquired over a million readers for zenhabits.net. You can follow him on Twitter at zen underscore habits. Now I really like the post today because it's actionable and a lot of these are something that I already do day to day without thinking about. But After reading this post, I realized that others don't think the same way. So for me, this is something very similar to what I would write if I were writing blogs right now, and I thought I'd share it with you. So let's get right to it. Time to optimize your life. Seven Rules That Keep My Life Simple by Leah Babauta of zenhabits.net I enjoy creating a few simple rules to live by that take away some of the overwhelming decision-making we need to make every day. Pre-think these decisions, formulate them into rules, and then just follow them, freeing your brain for more important decisions. Why should we need to give so much thought to what we'll wear and eat, how we'll exercise and handle email, when these are things we do every single day? So I've been crafting a few rules that keep my life simple, so I don't need to think about the little things so much. These rules change depending on my life circumstances, what I'm working on, where I am, what else is going on, etc., And I don't get mad at myself if I need to bend a rule now and then, but try to stick with them as a general principle. So here are the rules that have been working for me lately. Number one, clear my email inbox every Friday. I generally keep my email inbox to five to 10 emails, except when I'm traveling, or often fewer, but a handful of them stick around because I don't want to answer them, or there are too many little things I need to do in order to answer the email. So they hang around in my inbox all week, dragging on me mentally. My habit has been to clear out the inbox on Friday, answer the emails I've been putting off, take care of the little actions, archive ones I just know I won't answer. It's beautiful. A clear inbox is so nice. Then more emails come in almost immediately, and that's okay. I don't need a clear inbox all the time, and I purposely leave two to three in the inbox all week because I don't want to obsess over having a clear inbox all the time, just once a week. Number two, clear my Instapaper queue every Sunday. I like to read long-form articles online, but I can waste so much of my day reading them that I've gotten into the habit of making myself not read them during my peak productivity hours, and instead, I just save them to Instapaper for reading later. Others like Readability, Pocket, Safari's Read Later feature, they're all the same. This means I can have 10 to 20 articles in my queue, which I'll read when I have spare time, waiting in line or on the train, for example, but they pile up, and I've learned that if I leave the articles in the queue, I'll never read them. So I make a point every weekend to clear out my Instapaper queue. I read as many as possible, usually Sundays, and then clear out the ones I don't think I'll get to. I leave two articles in the queue at the end of every Sunday, so I always have something to read. Number three, get the important stuff done before anything else. Email, online reading, social media, etc. These can eat up your entire day if you let them. So I make sure I get to the most important stuff, which can get pushed back and back until you don't have the time or energy to actually do them. For me, this means meditation and writing, along with some distraction-free reading before I get to email or the rest. Number four, wear the same thing every day. I have a handful of clothes I wear, gray or black t-shirts with my one pair of jeans or shorts if I'm at home. I can throw any of the shirts on with my jeans or shorts so I don't think about what I wear. Side note, I also don't worry about my hair as I shave it weekly. This rule isn't for everyone, obviously. Five, eat the same thing every day. Honestly, I've long been a foodie and I really love food, but I discovered that eating out at delicious restaurants and cooking gourmet meals not only is bad for your waistline and your wallet, but takes up so much time and energy. 
So I reserve those things for special days, and the rest of the time, I just eat the same exact meals almost every day. The specific meals change over time, but I'll generally eat the same meal for lunch and dinner for about six months or longer. This isn't for everyone, I know. Recently, I've been eating tempeh with veggies every day, two meals a day. I eat steel-cut oats with berries and flaxseed for breakfast only on strength training days. Before that, it was tempeh. Before that, scrambled tofu, and before that, three-bean chili. Lots of veggies means huge health benefits. I don't eat lots of grains and snack on fruits. I only eat the sweets or refined grains socially on those special days, and honestly, I don't miss them at all. The main point isn't in the specifics, it's that I cook the food in big batches and eat that food for about three to four days. Number six, put limits on certain things. There are things I really enjoy, but I've found that if I overdo them, they're not so good for me. And because I like them so much, I tend to overdo them. So moderation through limits. Some examples, I limit my online reading to two 30-minute sessions a day, and recently I've limited myself to one glass of red wine in the evening, half a cup of coffee in the morning, two sweets on the weekends. These might change over time, but right now they're working brilliantly. I enjoy the things, but don't overdo them. Seven, treat an activity like a sacred ritual. This is the part I forget the most, but I've been getting better at remembering. Here's the idea. Every single thing we do can be done as an afterthought, like something you're just getting through to get to something more important, or it can be elevated to something sacred, like performing sacred rites. Washing your hands? Take a moment to realize how much of a miracle this act is. Many people don't have water for basic hygiene. Take a breath and truly pay attention as you go through the sacred hand-washing ritual. Do your dishes the same way. Every dish, a miracle. Every sensation elevated to a new importance. Every drop of water, a gem worth paying attention to. This applies to every activity. Writing, responding to an email, listening to a friend, playing with your child, taking a shower, going for a walk, paying bills. Worthy of your full attention, worthy of joy and appreciation. In actuality, I forget to follow some of these rules sometimes, but when I remember, things are much simpler. And so I endeavor to remember. You just listened to the blog post titled Seven Rules I Keep My Life Simple by Leah Babauta of zenhabits.net. And yeah, I actually do tend to wear pretty much the same thing every day, which is pajamas mostly since I work at home. And I keep my inbox at zero, but um, I totally understand where he's coming from with that, keeping it at one or two, just so you don't obsess about it. And my food choices are pretty much decided for me. So I found this post very relatable and I hope this helps optimize your life a bit. And if you enjoyed this reading, you should also take a look at theminimalists.com. They have similar actionable content, and I read one of their posts in the last episode. And one more time, I am my own sponsor, so all I ask for your support today is to visit oldpodcast.com and join the newsletter. Won't spam you, and the content will be full of great little nuggets, plus it'll be nice and short. That's it for episode two. Your optimal life awaits. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.